Welcome. Welcome Sigma males. Welcome men of Sigma spirit. And welcome anyone else who might be tuning into this. Welcome to the first Sigma spirit audio series. This is an audio series similar to a podcast, similar to a deep dive. It's just a form of content I wanted to create for anyone who wanted to get a deeper dive into the world of Sigma males, Sigma spirit, a dive into my mind, how things work, what sort of ideas I have and things I've learned along the way. So this podcast, this audio series, whatever you want to call it, is going to be a, a slower pace. It's going to be like a meditation. It's going to be something you listen to while you drive, do the dishes, clean your house, sit around a campfire, go hiking, whatever you want. And I'm going to continue these audio series as long as people listen to them. And as long as I have something to say, because these are a story, these tell a story a story that I've got to tell. And this whole series today, number one, episode number one, is going to be about awakening. And awakening means many things, but awakening can also refer to awakening to your gifts. And I feel like part of these podcasts, these audio series, is me understanding that I need to awaken to my gift, my gift of using my voice and telling my story and communicating and leading you guys, leading you guys to a better world, a better future as yourselves, more confident as Sigma males, create that Sigma spirit within you. So what is awakening in the other, in the other meaning? Well, I think that all men and women have to face awakenings at some point in their lives. But if you're listening to this, I think that you're coming to a place where you're ready. If you found my channel, you found this content, I'm sure that this is not the first video you're stumbling upon. Maybe it is though, which would be really cool because I certainly think that that would be a great sign that, that it's time for you to awaken. But I believe Sigma males in the world at large right now have to awaken to some of the things that are going on and the world kind of sucks if you're not if you're not an awakened sigma male if you don't understand who you are as a sigma male life sucks i get it i understand it's not fun it's a scary lonely weird disconnected place so my hope for this series and specifically this episode is that you will awaken with me and that you will awaken with your brothers here your brothers in sigma spirit because you're listening to this right now just remember someone else is also listening to this and they're probably going through the same thing and that should give you a lot of confidence it's like (laughs) right now in my life i'm facing a lot of difficulty and a lot of it is from the effects of coronavirus And there's one thing that makes it a lot better. It's that we're all going through it. Say, for example, I have to declare bankruptcy or something, hypothetically. You know how many other dudes out there are declaring bankruptcy right now because of coronavirus? So as long as we're all in the shit together, it makes it a lot better. Makes it a lot easier. You know people are going through this. It really sucks to be the only person going through something. That's just human nature. And specifically for awakenings, you don't want to be going through an awakening by yourself. So just know as you listen to this podcast, this audio series, you're not alone. And I hope by the end of this audio series, I stop calling it a podcast. So to start off, I want to talk about a quote. I'm sure many of you are familiar with from time to time. You're going to hear me drink some drink. It is a glass of peppermint tea. I'm trying to slow down in my life, I'm trying to relax a bit, 
And this peppermint tea really helps me relax, takes the edge off the caffeine. Now, the quote. It's very iconic to the Sigma spirit movement, and it's very dear to me. And it comes from the movie, The Matrix. Morpheus says, I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice, hmm? tumbling down the rabbit hole. And Neo says, you could say that. And Morpheus says, I see it in your eyes. You have the look of a man who accepts what he sees because he is except expecting to wake up. Ironically, that's not far from the truth. Do you believe in fate, Neo? And Neo says, no. And Morpheus asks, why not? And Neo says, because I don't like the idea that I'm not in control of my life. Morpheus, I know exactly what you mean. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Do you know what I'm talking about? So, bad Morpheus and Neo accents impersonations aside, I'm sure many of you hear that last part and you feel like I'm talking to you. Maybe you got goosebumps. I kind of got goosebumps right there doing it, saying it, feeling it. You have the look of a man who accepts what he sees because he is expecting to wake up. That's powerful. That's really powerful. It's there like a splinter in your mind driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. But I don't want you to think of me as some guru or some savior because I'm not. Because in my solipsistic view of reality, the only thing that matters is you. You are your savior. You are your own guru. Nonetheless, you're here. And you're here because I believe some sort of fate has brought you here, just like Morpheus felt about Neo. And I think once I started to believe in things like fate, life got a lot more beautiful. And part of what I think is Sigma spirit, maybe not necessarily Sigma male, but part of being Sigma spirit is the fact that you do believe in miracles. You do believe life is like poetry. You believe in fate serendipity, coincidence, life is a miracle, life is a movie. So I want to thank you for being here. This is a huge moment in your life. And I don't know if you know this, you might not believe it. But this is a huge moment in my life too. This is a huge shift for me to be doing this content for me to go all in on this stuff. So without dancing around the issue any longer, I want to talk about my awakening. I've had a long, long, long life, long road, and it's been full of <clears throat> mental and emotional hardship, isolation, depression, anxiety, insomnia, obsessive compulsive disorder, on and on. And as I've gotten older, things have gotten worse. They've culminated and it's become harder and harder. And it's only gotten harder and harder because I wasn't giving my gift and I, I wasn't living my true purpose. But things really, really kicked off in the last 12 to 18 months. This audio series could be a four hour 
story, but I'll save you the time and let's focus on you. I don't want to sit here and talk about my story the whole time. That may come later in a book, I'm sure. But I'll just say this, the last 18 months have seen me living in about 25 different rooms, okay? Airbnbs, friends' houses, parents' house, my apartment where I lived in the country before, bouncing all over, no certainty, just like a tumbleweed. Heartbreaks, health issues, family problems, death, all that kind of stuff, all that human life stuff, and it all just piled up. Around October last year, I went to Sasha Day Games Infinite Man Summit, and I saw an ad for this before I went. And I thought I have to go. Something called to me. I was in a really dark place. I was living on my in my friend's house, doing things I wasn't proud of all the time, feeling depressed, isolated, walking alone on the beach at night, crying. Grown man just crying, walking down the beach, abusing substances, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this event called to me. And I booked it and I figured I could make a business trip out of it because I had a client out there as well. So I'm all set to go and it's resistance after resistance I'm facing internally. Something inside of me doesn't want me to go. The day of the flight, I drink a cold brew coffee from Starbucks and Then I have this like mushroom coffee drink and I get the worst physical anxiety I've ever experienced. So I was flying from Virginia to DC, 45 minute flight. So that means you go up to 30,000 feet or so, and then you go down the hardest parts. If you're afraid of flying, I'm not afraid of flying, but something has happened to me in the last 12 months, which I'll go into at another time where I've lost something erased all my reference experiences about things being okay. And I've had to relearn those less, those reference experiences talking to a cashier, you know, you learn that when you're seven years old, I had that erased from my mind and I had to relearn that it was okay to go talk to a cashier ask them how their day was. My brain totally freaked out. So I forgot that it was okay to fly. I've been all over the world. I lost a fear of flying a long time ago, but on that day, horrible physical anxiety and this new issue with my brain, I thought I was going to die. I was terrified. So I get to DC and then I have another flight to LA and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking of how to rent a car and go to LA, take a train, cancel the whole thing, disappear. I could not get on the flight. And then finally I got on the flight, horrible, horrible fear. And this guy gets on the plane and he sits down about two rows ahead, has one of the most intense, chill, masculine vibes I've ever seen. He's got a long beard. He's this hippie dude. Looks like he's really done a lot of work on himself. He had that real cool, calm confidence about him where you ask him something and he, he would pause for two seconds and think about it. No reactivity. And we just start talking and he starts just connecting with me on levels that I didn't know stranger could connect with me on. He starts talking about my beard. He gives me pointers about my beard. 
he tells me where to get the pants he's wearing that I like, that I, that I compliment on him, compliment him on. He starts talking about meditation and mindfulness. And before I know it, we're in the air. And I'd forgotten all about the fear that I felt. All that self-sabotage because I connected with someone. So once that resistance was over and I landed, I knew everything was going to be okay. At least I thought. So I go to the event and it's phenomenal. It's a phenomenal event. But I have more resistance to the event. The night before I get super drunk, almost don't make it to the event, really hung over for the whole day. Definitely missed some part of it because I was hung over this, this resistance, this self-sabotage. But then on the last day, one of the speakers comes up to me, this woman named Kathy, and she starts talking about imaginal cells. And when a butterfly goes from a caterpillar to its butterfly form, it's not a pretty process. It doesn't just grow wings. It's not this beautiful, nice thing. The butter, the caterpillar has to destroy itself basically like melting into this sludge, this, this disgusting mess until it reforms itself and becomes a butterfly. It's not what you think it is. It's, it's maybe, you know, about this process, but she starts talking about how in the cocoon, there's these things called imaginal cells. And I'm not sure this is legitimate science. I didn't look, I didn't care because it was such a powerful way that she presented this idea to me. And she starts talking about in the cocoon, one cell over there says, I'm going to be the butterfly cell. And then another cell on the other side says, I'm going to be a butterfly cell too. And at first they're far apart and they feel isolated, but eventually they come together and more of the cells become butterfly cells until it makes its transformation. And that's how I feel you are right now, I'm sure. You feel isolated, but right now you're getting this call. And when I heard that, I felt that. I really felt that. I felt that, wow, I have received a call. And so I had this incredible confidence on the last day of the event. And they gave me the microphone to say, to talk about how we felt about the event. And I remember just standing up, looking around, connecting with almost everyone, 50 people with my eye contact, just acknowledging each, each and every one of them, feeling no rush to say what I had to say. And just saying, I feel like there's nothing that separates me from what I want in the world. I can feel my soul is just like unstoppable, bulletproof. It's just like a being emanating from my stomach, my belly, my center, just penetrating the world. And it was an incredible experience, but then something happened. I believe what happened was I had a rebound effect and I glimpsed what it was like to be confident, enlightened, awakened, and I snapped back even worse, even worse than I've ever felt. And there were some life things that happened and I had to go live somewhere. I didn't really want to live for, for a reason that I don't want to get into here, but it was a place where I felt incredibly misunderstood, but it was also the place where I learned what a Sigma male was and it hit me so, so hard. And that's why we're here. So whatever you're going through, understand this is your process. Even though you might feel misunderstood, doesn't matter if you feel misunderstood by others. Most of you feel pain because you feel misunderstood by yourself. And that's why I created this content, this channel, these episodes, so you can understand yourself because it doesn't matter that other people don't understand you. I've got some great quotes here. Got one by Ralph Waldo Emerson.
Is it so bad then to be misunderstood? Pythagoras was misunderstood. And Socrates and Jesus and Luther and Copernicus and Galileo and Newton and every pure wise spirit that ever took flesh. To be great is to be misunderstood. So I'm going to give you time to think about these. This audio series is a meditation, like I said. I'm not going to fill every moment of silence. This is for your growth. This isn't for my... ideas. This is for me to present an idea and then you digest it or spit it out. So I'm going to give you time to think. Another one by Friedrich Nietzsche. Every deep thinker is more afraid of being understood than of being misunderstood. So I think as Sigma males, we have a deep complexity to us and there's a part of us that knows that we're not meant to be understood because some of our ideas are so far from the norm that it would actually shock us if everyone felt the way we did. So it is scary to think that people could understand us. You don't, you don't want people to understand that pain, that depth, that complexity. Sometimes I think I would not wish my brain upon another one, another human, if they had the choice. I've been called one of the deepest men another friend of mine has ever known. And I don't say that to be arrogant or stroke my own ego, because what I'm talking about is not wishing that depth on people. So that's why that quote I think is really interesting. Every deep thinker is more afraid of being understood than of being misunderstood. Because as Sigma males, I don't think we want our fear, our depth, our insecurities, the things that keep us up. We wouldn't, wouldn't want that for our worst enemies. So... I've had a lot of awakenings. One imagines life to be culminating into this moment where you have a huge climax and there's this rock bottom moment and then you climb out of it and you're good forever. Just like a movie, right? I love movies, but unfortunately I think it's conditioned me to have these ideas that aren't true. When I look back on my life, I've had a lot of rock bottom moments, had a lot of awakenings, had a lot of epiphanies, and they happen over a long enough timeline. But I've had a lot in the last few years. I think it happens when a man hits 28, 27, 28, 29, 30, somewhere around that time, you start thinking about other than yourself and your own pleasure. Don't get me wrong, I'm still very much driven by pleasure. I love pleasure. I'm kind of a hedonistic person. I'm pretty high on the ADHD scale. I love novelty. But these awakenings have happened over the past few years, despite that. You can still be pleasure-seeking and be maturing. You can still be evolving. So don't think that you have to be an ascetic or something. But these awakenings happened. I spent a lot of time alone. Had to literally go to an island. I moved to an island. A small island. I was marooned on this island. I'll tell this story another time. 
I was trapped there financially. I moved to this island nation. Couldn't leave. Didn't have enough money to afford a flight. And that'll do something to you. That'll really, really change you as a man. And there were a lot of awakenings there. A lot of hard truths I had to accept. And now we're going through something else. Going through a pandemic. Just had to face some real, real truths. And this last truth I just learned. Presence, awareness, mindfulness is everything. There is no life without the present moment. And I've just been living. I've been living outside the moment. I've been living in yesterday, last year, when I was 11 years old, this thing happened. The last, when I screwed something up. And then living in the future. What am I going to look like when this? Am I going to have cancer? Am I going to get hit by a bus? Will the world be here in 50 years? Will I get old? Am I going to look old? Am I going to be a creepy guy who can't get women when he's 45 because I'm 45? Blah, 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 blah. And I just forgot about the present moment. So that's been the big awakening for me in the last week. The last week, I felt that. And these awakenings happened through solitude. How did I get there? Solitude. YouTube. People hate on YouTube sometimes. I, I have friends that don't understand why I spend so much time on YouTube. And I understand there's stupid videos on there. But there is the wealth of the world's knowledge on there. It's, it's been an amazing resource as long as you pick the right people to learn from. Books, YouTube, solitude, self-reflection, self-awareness. If you do those things, you look at them, and you listen to that inner voice inside of you, you're going to awaken. Now, I want to talk about problems and pains that I've faced in my journey. Because you might think, maybe this guy doesn't understand my struggle. So I'm going to be real and honest here. Real raw. I've looked at people in groups and felt, when will I ever feel normal like that? When will I ever be happy like that? I've walked by people in restaurants, like that scene in Into the Wild, when he's looking in the bar and he's looking at society. And you can see his face reflected back on the glass and there's people inside and they're drinking, they're having fun. I've had those moments where I look in a restaurant and I think, why can't I feel that happiness? Why can't I just be normal, simple? I felt unreachable by people. I've had loved ones reach out to me, girls I dated, girls I loved, try to say things to me when I'm in that dark hole of depression and isolation and they can't, they can't reach me. I'm unreachable. I've done things out of snap judgment, reaction. I've hurt friends. I've said things that were really, really not good, really painful, just trying to snap back. I felt isolated. I felt so nervous and insecure that I couldn't even talk to a woman, couldn't even talk to a cashier. I remember this one time, I was about 23, and I was with my girlfriend at the time. Really small dinner party we were going to. Very simple, very cut and dry. Something I've done before and, and done it many times. And we sat, in the cr we sat in the car while I started crying because I couldn't bring myself to go into this dinner party of strangers. And I didn't understand why. And I still don't really know why that happened. I felt like I didn't have the external measures of success that everybody else seems to be in accumulating. I felt angry at the system. I feel mar felt marginalized before. Felt so independent that I was the most tiny minority in the entire world. 
many of you might feel like that. You might be looking around right now at the conversations about minorities and you think, I don't care because nobody understands that I am the only minority when you're so independent. I think Jordan Peterson said something like, being an individual is the real minority or something like that. And I think for guys like us, people listening to this, people understand that without getting too political or, or talking about issues. I have a lot of empathy and compassion for what's going on with Black Lives Matter. But I also understand that people are sitting in their houses thinking, you know, it doesn't matter about race. It doesn't matter about this, that. They might be thinking, I feel alone for no other reason than just feeling alone. I'm a minority for no other reason than I'm a minority because no one understands me. And I think that's the most debilitating kind of marginalization because no one's coming for those people. Doesn't matter your, your race, your sex, whatever. Those misunderstood, marginalized people. Nobody's coming to save them. Nobody's making a day for those people. Nobody's making a holiday for them. Nobody's blacking out social media for people who just feel misunderstood, regardless of their color, race, sexual orientation, whatever. And I think that's one of the, the biggest flaws right now we're seeing is that people are misunderstood and they don't fit into a certain box. So them feeling misunderstood isn't important. That's what you're saying. I think it's a problem. So I faced all of those things. And eventually one day I realized it's time to wake up. It's time to have an awakening. And not too long ago, I had this most recent epiphany. The words you're hearing right now from my mouth are due in part because of this epiphany that I had, this awakening. But awakening came from pain. It was a self-destruction. It was an ego death. So why is, it more, why is it more important now than ever for these awakenings? Like I said, the world is marginalized. People are marginalized. People are misunderstood. People feel disconnected. And in that wake of people feeling disconnected and weak and powerless and confused and scared, tyranny will fill that place. People will take advantage of that weakness. You feel confused? Someone will tell you what to think. You feel alone? Someone will give you something to make you feel less alone. You don't understand yourself? Someone will fill you with things, that ideas that make you think you understand yourself. If you don't understand your masculinity, you know what they'll do? If you don't go find the right teacher to learn about that spirit within you, that, that manly spirit within you, that masculine energy, someone will just teach you that it's wrong. You just have too much of it. And the same goes for feminine energy. Women have a lot of trouble understanding their feminine energy. I think feminists don't understand feminine energy. And they've made it into something that no one, no one even talks about. Extremely misunderstood. So it's time to have these awakenings for the world, for ourselves, for our families, for our tribes. We are heading toward a climax I believe in civilization and the world is going to need people just like you, people listening to this content, sensitive, deep, introverted, considerate, compassionate, masculine, confident secure, 
have done the work. Just remember that when you think about your awakening, the fear you might feel about awakening. I don't know about all that. I don't know about all this awakening stuff. If you're here, you're ready. There's a great book I talked about before, great series of books by a guy named Jed McKenna. And I'll never forget, I, I, I definitely had the time after I read Jed McKenna where I was a little loopy, I was a little goofy. I wasn't sure what to think. It was very, very, very rea- reality bending, rea- reality shaking, shook me to the core. And I had a friend I recommended listen to it. And he was depressed for like a few months after he read it because it's so, so earth shattering. And to me, that's what it's, it's kind of like being a Sigma male. It's, it's shaky. It's scary. It shakes the system. People don't want to know about this stuff, but when you break free, it's just like the matrix. In fact, if you've ever seen the Animatrix series, I highly recommend it because if it's a series of animated shorts about concepts similar to the Matrix. Some of it is like a prequel, some of it is just stuff about life in the Matrix. It's really cool. But one of the stories is about a guy, a sprinter, I believe, who figures out that he's in an illusion and he figures out that he can he can break the rules of the matrix just like Neo and he does so at the expense of his body though because his body had limitations but his mind did not he could break free his mind could break free but his body still had the limitations so he does this crazy world record and then I don't want to spoil the ending, but he has limitations. But I thought of that when I thought about breaking free, awakening, and how the only limitations are your own mind. You might rub up against things physically and in the tangible world that push back a little bit, but I want you to have a positive view of what this life could be like as a Sigma male, as a man of Sigma spirit. And don't take anything less than that. Don't accept anything less. Because right now you might be feeling all those things I felt. Confused, misunderstood, angry, insecure, jealous, totally lost in life. Do you feel like that? Do you feel lost? You feel like you're just blowing in the wind, wasting your life away. I felt it. Uh, So I don't know where you are in life. I don't know what sort of phase you're in in life, but you have a solution here and it's to break free. It's to, at all costs, initiate this phase of awakening. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen over a week. It's going to take a long time. It's a, it's a process and you need to treat it as such. You need to be respectful of that process. And if you're afraid to start, well, honestly, for most of you, you've already started. If you're here, You've already started. So just keep moving forward with it. Some of you might be on the brink of death, depression. You might be on the edge of your seat, suicidal. And I'll tell you something that helped me. And if you are suicidal, you're having suicidal ideation, you need to immediately stop this audio series and you need to seek professional help. There's no shame in that. Suicide is very serious. I have my own personal experiences with it. And there's no shame in getting help. 
but I'll give you my advice. It's not my advice. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say it like that. It's just a thing that I read that helped me. And basically this guy was talking about his depression and how his depression became so severe that he was planning to kill himself and he decided he was going to go hang himself in a forest and he drove out to go hang himself in this park and he, he had to drive really far to find a place where people weren't around who couldn't save him and he realizes there's no place he's going to be able to go where there aren't going to be people around that will either witness the suicide, intervene on the suicide, or find him later. And he had the foresight to think that he didn't want to be that kind of burden on people. And he said that he went home, he got rid of the rope, and it was like he had killed himself. But instead, he killed off some part of himself. And I want you to think about that if you're, if you've sought help for suicide. Think about it like this. There are many parts of you. There are many souls within you. There are many voices. If you want to awake, you want to start over, endeavor to commit suicide to your old self, to that old version of you and commit to a new version of yourself. Die today. So tomorrow you can be reborn as this new person. You can do this symbolically. You can write yourself a note. You can say all the things that you wish you could say on your last day to your friends, your family, clean your house. I think Chuck Palahniuk, the author of Fight Club, he talks about doing this every year. He cleans his affairs, he cleans his house, he, un he gets everything back to organized as if he were going to kill himself tomorrow. He says the things he needs to, to, to say to people. And then he breathes. And that's it. You know, it's this process. So if you're, if you're feeling like that, you're on the edge. Your whole being is not on edge. Your whole being doesn't want to die. Your whole being is not hopeless. But a part of you is. And maybe that part needs to disappear. Maybe you need to put that one to rest. So there are many of you who have been hurt by solitude. Solitude can be very dangerous. Isolation and solitude are very different. Isolation can be diff very dangerous for people, especially men. Probably more so for women, actually. But isolation is maybe what some of you need, the solitude, intentional isolation. But there's a word of caution here. If you think you're going to go into solitude to start to understand yourself as a Sigma male from Nietzsche, and he says, it is what one takes into solitude that grows there the beast within included. And I think it's important to remember as you go into solitude, if you're trying to wake up through solitude, that it can be dangerous. A beast within you can grow. It can get a lot uglier before it gets prettier. But I think for the majority of you, you need community. And that's why I'm creating this content. I think as Sigma males, we love to be alone. We love to be loners. We think we're independent, isolated, solitude, all that stuff. We're so independent. But most of you love people. You love friends. You have friends you, you love hanging out with. I have friends I love hanging out with. The real Sigma male has great friends. The power of, of male friends, male companions, female friends, female companions, lovers, brothers, it's undisputable. The thing that we like to be separate from as Sigma males is the mainstream. That's what we should really think about. The, the system, the social ladder, the social hierarchy. 
So I can't stress enough if you're trying to unplug, you're trying to awake yourself as a Sigma male. The biggest thing here is just going for it. I'm going to go for it. I got a voice inside of me that says it's time to wake up. That's half the battle right there. Just saying, just saying that to yourself. I feel like it's time to wake up. I'm going to step into that power. But that power is also vulnerability. It's also scary as hell. But you need to remember if you're about to wake up, all of the Sigma spirit strengths are strengths. Those traits are powers and you need to learn how to use them. Your independence, your introversion, your depth, your sensitivity, your analytical side, your mystery, that charisma you have, that self-reliance, that defiance. You need to learn to use it the right way. I think the second part of waking up is understanding your strengths. Those strengths that I just listed. And here's something crazy about being a Sigma male. You're the Sigma male and you decide what being a Sigma male means. So you need to figure out what your strengths are as a Sigma male and what your strengths are as a person, as a man, as a human. There's a book called Strengths Finders. That was really powerful for me to read. There's another book called The Big Leap, but that's more about strengths as they pertain to what you want to do with your life, your purpose, your zone of genius, the great, your gift that you're going to give. But as far as your strengths as a person, your personality traits, etc., that can only come through self-reflection. And it took me a long time to find those strengths myself. I tried many different things. I tried to be everything. I thought that I could be Elon Musk and James Bond and um, all these different other things, a Renaissance man and a little bit of Leonardo da Vinci here and then a little bit of the most interesting man in the world and then a little bit of Howard Rourke. No. You can only be you. And the sooner you realize that, the better. Which brings me to my l next point. Kill your heroes. You gotta become your own hero. You can't just idolize people. You can't idolize people as these models. We can use them as models of who our Sigma male role models are, but we can't rely on them. We've gotta build our own thing. We've got to become our own hero. Part of my journey out of depression and anxiety, I realized there were two major things wrong with me on top of the many external and real things in my life. There were things in my life, real external tangible things that I, I had to figure out. That's a given. There's no way around that. You've got to figure out what things are draining you. You're in a job you hate. You're in a bad relationship, you're broke, you're living in a terrible town. You gotta figure those out. But there was a deeper thing for me. I felt ostracized by not really feeling like I belonged anywhere or connected with anyone. And I was so focused on survival. But what kind of grand vision was that to aim for? I needed something bigger. I needed a hero to aspire to become. I didn't need to solve my depression and anxiety. I just had to become someone legendary. And I actually wrote that one night, thinking back on my life. And it's true, and that, that's gonna be my next project. Once Sigma Male resources are off the ground and Sigma Spirit is the number one channel to help you guys out. And we have a big world where you guys can live in and a community where you can connect and I'm helping thousands of you. I'm going to move on to something else. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it, but it's going to be about bravery and adventure. It's going to be about me doing these things that scare the 
scare the hell out of me. It's going to be about me becoming that heroic character that I promised myself I would become. And I'm going to write books about it. And I'm going to go on these great feats, these adventures, these tests of endurance, and I'm going to write about them. About how just a normal guy can do these things. Want to walk across the country with nothing but a backpack? Don't know the language? I'll write a book about it. And I want to give a model. Selfishly, I want to do it because it will change me. And I have this drive to do it. Unselfishly, I want to give everyone a model of what it would be like for this person to pull themselves out of despair. So, in summary, if you feel like it's time to wake up, if you've listened to this point at all, it's time to wake up and you're in the right place. All you got to do is just put another step in front of the other one and then again and then again. Don't try to find the answers. This is a great quote and I'm going to paraphrase it because the actual way it's worded, I'm not actually really a huge fan of, but it's by a guy named Rilke. He's a poet. I think his name's Eric Maria Rilke. Basically, one of his quotes is, don't try to find the answers. Live the questions now so that one day you may find yourself in the answers. You'll find yourself living the answers. And I think that's very powerful for waking up. Don't try to wake up. Try to live a life that answers questions. What would it feel like to do this? What if I gave my phone away? Would I wake up? What if I just spent the next month talking to strangers? Would I still feel isolated and introverted? What if I did this? What if I did that? Ask these questions and then go live them and see what that does for your waking up process. I think you can get creative here and find your own way to ask these questions to help you wake up. Because honestly, you're probably already awake. You just need to believe that you're, you're okay, that you're good, that you're, you're, you've awakened. I've been trying not to use the word woke because it has a very different, weird meaning nowadays. Sigma awakened. And use guides along the way. If you have to use guides, you have to use channels like mine. You have to study the greats to help you wake up. But remember to get rid of them when they no longer serve you. Because ultimately you have to become your own guide. Just like you're doing now. I can't stress that enough. This idea of this person off in a distant future that, that is your guide. One day you're so confident that you can guide yourself through life. You've made it so far on your own. Don't forget that. So in our next episode, we're going to talk about something else. We're going to talk about character. And in another episode, we're going to talk about purpose. Character and purpose. And it's not the character you think. It might surprise you. So thank you. Big, big, big big, enormous love for everyone out there. This, this series is, this episode specifically is really a tribute to anyone who feels marginalized, misunderstood. It's not about, I'm more misunderstood than you. No, I'm more marginalized than you. We're all going through it. We're all in it. It's not a comparison. It's not a game. Just because you're less, you're less marginalized than someone else, don't let them make you feel bad. And if you're more marginalized than someone else, don't make them feel bad. It's not a race. Not in the future that we're building. 
Just remember that when you go out there. Give those Sigma male gifts. Wake people up. Snap them out of it. Tell them, hey, those other people, they're not like me, and I'm not like them. So don't put me in a box, because I'll shatter the box right there on the floor at your feet. And you'll see who I am. And you'll know that you can't categorize me because I'm not here to do bad things. I'm not here to do evil. I'm here to give my gift. I'm here to share my Sigma spirit because I believe that's going to change the world. And that's what we need. Much love. I'll see you on the next one.